I got to talk about one of my guys, man, my 2010 draft class brother. Talk about it coming full circle. Uh, Marquise Pouncey officially announced his retirement. Um, was it? I think it would have been a Friday, correct? If I, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I don't even but remember. Man, this weekend was a blur, dude. Yeah, dude. It was so much stuff happening, too, as well, man. You got pins. You had other big news in terms of marquee guys becoming free agents. So, And we'll obviously get into all of that. But, man, as a whole, though, man, my man Marquise Pouncey, 11 seasons with five-time All-Pro, nine-time Pro Bowler, uh, was it the the 2010 All Decade Team yep. or whatever? Like, I mean, this dude, his track record speaks for himself, man. To me, I think he's a surefire Hall of Famer in terms of just everything that he did, his impact on the field. Man, you talk about impact, you talk about longevity, you talk about playing through injuries. He brought you all of that, and ultimately, man, he changed that center position again, right? We talk about here in Pittsburgh how we're always ahead of the curve when you think about your Websters, your, your Damani Dawsons and stuff like that. But Pouncey was another guy that was ahead of his curve and ahead of his time in terms of when he came in the league and doing some of the stuff in terms of some of the pulls that he was capable of. Me being a linebacker, you know, playing against him at times, firsthand, I'm like, yo, this is the, the worst. Like, you're not supposed to be able to do this from the center position. Guy shouldn't be that athletic, man. But the fact that, you know, he was, it was just a true testament to him. And like I said, I was glad to be able to share the locker room with him for four years and obviously be a part of that. 2010 draft class that just has oh so many talented people <laughs> you're right the athleticism at the center position i was watching some highlights er earlier today and i just couldn't believe it dude his ability to get downfield he's blocking in front of levy on bell mm -hmm. or then just even his footwork and movement whenever ben yes. would drop back to pass and like his ferocity with how he blocked mm -hmm. it was like the dude didn't even have a chance at all yeah and, and i will say this too man at first, you know, I would only think that, hey, this is just a game type thing. That intensity is only associated with the game because obviously in Buffalo, that was the only time I saw him. But once I came over here in 14 and was really able to see him day in and day out, he's another one of those workaholic type guys. You think about your ABs and your Le'Veon Bells. We talk about how just crazy their work ethic is. Pouncey is in that same cloth. He's cut from that same mold. You would see him in practice and we would joke. We would, we would call him a cannibal because of how he would beat on the the practice squad old lineman or the look team old lineman when they're doing warm. So I'm like, man, if you hit your own guy like that, what you gonna do when you face us? You know what I mean? So <laughs> you would just see him, but that was the only speed that he knew, and that's what made him such a great player for so long. And it was contagious. You know, you get some guys who they want to take a play off in practice, so you're kind of you know 50 50 with them. But in this scenario, with Pouncey, you knew from start to finish, it didn't matter what the tempo was, he was going 100%, and you could respect him for that. No, nah, absolutely. And actually, one of the things that I read earlier today about when he got drafted with Mike Tomlin was mm -hmm. that, I, I guess, whatever research he did with Pouncey was that he like played through injur injuries, he was so mm -hmm. determined, and he always brought that type of mentality that you were talking about. So whenever the, yeah. that draft came around, the 2010 draft, he was like, we need to get Pouncey. Because I think at that time, too, uh, Art Rooney wanted to improve the run game. So it made sense. I wanted yeah. Des Bryant really bad, but I remember when we drafted Pouncey. But it kind of makes sense going back full circle, like you mentioned yeah. earlier, why we wanted Pouncey so bad and why Tomlin wanted Pouncey. Absolutely. And the thing that I would always tell people as well, man, when they would get on him in terms of sometimes him being injured a lot and they would say, well, man, he's just, you know, why is he always getting hurt? And I'm like, honestly, he gets hurt because he's so athletic. He's in positions downfield where you typically don't see linemen. Typically it's little guys, DBs, running backs, right? Safeties. So it's not a lot of bigger body people out there falling around, but him, man, he would be out there and yeah, sometimes you get caught up in those type of things. And obviously we know about the other scenario where, you know, friendly fire kind of got him and stuff like that. So as a whole, man, you know, it was unfortunate the time that he did miss, but the time that he did, you know, play, the the the, the times where he was available, man, he, he was the best center out there. And I don't think it was even a debate. Like since he came in the league, we saw his stint. We saw how dominant he was. It's very rare you get a guy that comes in and day one, he's the guy. But that, that was Pouncey, man. And that was from an NFL standpoint, too, man. We might be remiss, too, to not talk about his leadership and loyalty mm -hmm. just to teammates. Oh, yeah. You've talked about it countless times. Absolutely, just me man. and you personally, how much he meant mm -hmm. to the locker room. But then you hear yeah. it from Ben. You hear it from basically every Steeler. Like, oh, Pouncey yeah. was that dude in the locker room, the unifier. Like, mm -hmm. whenever there was a problem, like, he was the guy, yeah. like, that could kind of bring both sides together and, and make, make it a team on a week-by-week -week basis. 
the thing that we always would that, that me personally that I always enjoyed about Pouncey was that right the the realness the rawness with him I mean this is a guy that you know obviously he had some off the field stuff that people talk about you know but this the same guy that I would see in Bible study with me on a Friday morning before practice like you would see him in there and constantly wanting to learn not just a part of it but like really being involved but then at the same time this is a guy that would stand up for you if he if you needed somebody to help you if you needed something he's a guy that you could call I mean when you get those type of compliments man that's what you want to hear that means you are a really good person and that's why a lot of times us as teammates and, and brothers of him we would always laugh when people, you know, paint him as this villain, as this this gangster thug, this bad guy. It's like, man, obviously we all come from different situations and we all have different upbringings. But the the root of Pouncey, man, he is a genuinely good dude. Like this is a guy that you would want in your corner, man. Like I said, I was glad that I was able to have him in my corner, man. Yeah, just unfortunate, I guess. Yeah. On one hand, you wish he could have played for an extra two or three years, but yeah. if he felt like his time was now, then you just got to respect mm -hmm. that. Well, and you saw what he said. He he didn't say that he didn't, you know, he wasn't capable of doing it. He said the desire to to fulfill the commitment of me playing is what he does not want to do anymore. I can relate 100%. That's the same thing I was saying when I retired. It was like, it's not a physical thing. Yes, he's still able to go out there and play at a high level. You know, it might not be Pouncey of, you know, the, the, the early 10s and stuff like that, but he can still come out here and be a, a dominant player. But when you don't have the desire to go in there and grind the Monday through Friday, you don't have that desire to work out multiple times a week, stay committed from a dieting standpoint, stay committed from an off-season film study standpoint, self-scouting, it takes a lot. And a lot of people don't realize, like, to be dominant or to last this long, you can't do it half-heartedly. You have to do it 100%. You have to be all the way committed. Otherwise, it's going to show in a major way. You either get hurt or you're going to look terrible on the field. And ultimately, that's going to get you released anyways. But hearing what he said, man, I could totally respect it. I'm just glad that, you know, if he was feeling that way, that he did have enough, you know, courage to say it because there are a good amount of guys that don't say it and they continue to fight with it and, and come to work and hate every day of it. So, you know, it was good to really hear him say that in that uh, in his release. Yeah, because that's what you're doing for so long. Football. Yeah. Absolutely. That's all you know. That's your whole identity since you're a kid. I mean, this is a guy that has been at the pinnacle of every level. You think about him in high school, you know, at Lakeland with his brother, dominant. You think about him at Florida, dominant. And then obviously here in the Steelers, dominant. I mean, it, it gets no bigger than that for him. So, yeah, man. And he's, still this get, is, he's still getting awards, too. <laughs> absolutely, man. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So it's it's a crazy thing, man. But he's one of those guys that, like you said, man, if you ever had the chance to come across him, man, you, you were very fortunate. He's an awesome dude, man. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm glad we we talked about him to start off the podcast though. Absolutely, definitely man. One had to. The, definitely had one of the Steeler to. legends for sure. No question, man. Like I said, Steeler legend, 2010 draft class legend, future Hall of Famer in my book. I like I said, I'm just happy for him, man. I'm happy for him to be able to do it on his own terms as well. Cause that's another thing, right? How often do we see guys that they stay a little bit too long and they kind of get kicked out versus being able to leave on their own terms? Go to a different to get, team. Right. And it's not the same where they got to get carried off because they didn't got hurt. Like to me, man, being able to see guys walk away under their own power. I, I always applaud that, man. You talking about Brett Favre there? <laughs> hey, wait a minute now. <laughs> You're saying I know a guy. Oh, all right. <laughs> Man, man, man. No, big time tip of the captain, my dog, Pouncey, man.